government last Thursday secured 1.86 billion cities from the sale of the seven-year bond, which replaced the maturing five-year bond. We have an infographic to show you. Now, the long-term bond was marginally oversubscribed by 3.3%. At the same time, the interest cost of the debt instrument went down by 6.4% to 18.10%, saving government some significant interest payment. Now, the market has been uh, favorably conditioned in the past few weeks with stronger demand and lower interest rate expectations. This has triggered renewed investor interest in the domestic market, particularly Treasury bills. Now, analysts have attributed the success of the sale of the seven-year bond as critical to government's quest to reduce the cost of servicing loans and lengthening the maturing period of outstanding debt, as well as easing the refinancing pressure. For now, it's unclear whether uh, non-resident or foreign participation was significant, and government intends borrowing two billion cities between June and August this year. Let's discuss this further. Joining me is uh, CEO of Republic. Uh, Bank Securities called Saki, uh, with some analysis on this. Good afternoon to you. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, and it's great to have you on the program call. Just your reaction to uh, this news that the seven year bond was um, oversubscribed. I'm not too sure if called Saki can hear me. Uh, I guess we are working, uh, we are working uh, to, to fix the situation there. But uh, let me just try one more time. Let's hope that. Technology is favorable. One more time. Call, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah, yes, I can hear you. Uh, so just your quick reaction to uh, this news about the seven-year... Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Your reaction right. to the news that uh, our bonds, the seven-year uh, bond was uh, oversubscribed? Sure. Um, I think it was uh, expected uh, because... Um, coming back from COVID and all that happened in the financial space, mm. everyone is looking for a safe haven um, to invest. And um, government is one of the safest. Okay. Uh, we're having challenges connecting with a call. Uh, we have connection problems this afternoon. Apologies for that. We'll fix that and get back to him as we discuss uh, government securing $1.86 billion uh, Ghana cities from the domestic market for a seven-year bond sale. Um, as we do that, we want to turn attention to some other news that uh, is uh, coming through to us this afternoon. President Kufuado appointing Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid as Chief Executive of the National Petroleum Authority. We've got uh, yeah, that to show you. This ends months of speculations linking him to one of the most prestigious state-owned enterprises in Ghana. His appointment uh, takes effect from the 1st of July 2021. In a letter dated 17th of June 2021, Dr. Abdul Hamid has been charged to champion the vision and mission of the MPA, which is to regulate, oversee, and monitor downstream industry, petroleum industry in Ghana for efficiency, growth, and stakeholder satisfaction. He is expected to reposition the downstream petroleum uh, regulator in order to address the high revenue leakages in the sector. He's taking over from Hassan Tampoli, who is now the Member of Parliament for Gushegu in the Northern Region. Dr. Hamid served as a spokesperson to then uh, candidate Ekufuado from 2008 to 2017, when he became the uh, Information Minister and uh, Presidential Spokesperson. Prior to that, he served as the Executive Director of the Dankwa Institute and lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Um, in the course of the program, I will be speaking with Fitz Moses, who is a researcher with the IES for his um, thoughts on this appointment and the work cut out for Mustafa Hamid. But I want to go back to um, our earlier story about government last Thursday securing 1.86 billion cities from the sale of a seven-year uh, bond. Uh, back on the line with us this time, hopefully uh, we can get a better connection to him. It's called Saki, who is with uh, Republic Bank Security. So, Call, I was just uh, picking your reaction to um, news that we secured 1.86 billion uh, cities from that seven-year uh, bond sale. How's that? Hi, um, Daryl. I think I can hear you loud and clear now. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, generally the market having seen some recent um, downward spirals in terms of the yield, um, it was expected that this seven-year issuance 
would clear at a rate relatively lower than the previous ones. I think the last one was over 19%. Mm. So um, 1.86 billion, you know, and clearing at 18.1% was highly anticipated. You, you, you put that side by side with um, how the equities market is performing, and then you notice that that was something that was coming because the equities market is on the upward trajectory and the fixed income market or the yield in the government bond space is, is trending downward. So it was highly anticipated and investors also prepared themselves adequately to meet such a yield. Okay, so uh, just to enlighten our audience, how did the fall in inflation rate and the uh, reduction in the policy rates affect um, the outcome of this bond sale? Okay, so the um, fall in the inflation rate and then you know that the MPC rate had also gone down before uh, the inflation rate was announced. It mm. all um, indicated the trajectory or the intent of market forces, especially on the regulator side, to um, realign rates. Now, um, we know that uh, several rates along the fixed income spectrum have fallen more than, some of them more than 50 basis points where they previously used to be. So it was just an indication of the direction mm. where um, rates are supposed to be going towards. And um, uh, the inflation bit, of course, also shows that um, things are not as, uh, rising, uh, the prices are not rising as high as they used to previously. So some kind of contraction in terms of rates all over is, is, is what was brought to bear with the decline in the um, inflation rate and then, of course, the monetary policy rate as well. Okay. And, uh, you know, we ran a story earlier about our debt situation. Now, when you, when you speak with analysts, um, they talk about the fact that we cannot uh, stop borrowing at this point. And uh, they advise that we rather turn to the domestic market. And looking at what has happened, it looks really promising. Um, how does that uh, help our debt situation? And how does this outcome also affect our economy positively? Well, um, looking inwardly to to borrow is, of course, better than um, going out in some ways. Why is this so? This is because, uh, more or less, the capital will remain in the economy. There won't be much capital supply. For instance, when um, we have a chunk of uh, investors coming from outside, you know mm -hmm. that they would definitely take their money back out of the country. But um, essentially... On my side, it creates quite an active um, market for us to deepen uh, the, 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 the capital market in the country. And um, it also affords investors the opportunity to, you know, have several options. Before um, several institutions, financial institutions were closed down, there were fixed deposit investments available and you know that came with a bit of risk. But right now, that there's opportunity for everyone to um, be able to participate or partake in government offering because they would look down here and then you know borrow more locally. It, it, it creates the opportunity for investors to also consider keeping their money here. And in the end, the, the economy is better off for it. All right. So this was uh, a domestic... Uh this money was secured from the domestic market, but it was open to everyone, I mean, everyone, foreigners yeah. as well. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, my last question to you. So um, what's the anticipation um, on the market right now, seeing how things have turned out? Okay, you know, we are in um, a very uh, risk-averse space. Right. Six or maybe seven to eight out of ten um, investors will uh, prefer to look at very safe and secure investment and um, that means that people would have to now vary or try and analyze their returns because the returns you are going to get on the uh, fixed income market will be relatively lower than you used to have it before okay. so if you cannot take as much risk in terms of um, getting onto 
the equities market or the stock market, then you would have to be ready to expect and receive lower rates. But of course, the opportunity for you as an investor also to try and um, um, explore the equities market is available and you get good advice, you can get some good returns as well. Call Saki, uh, Chief Executive of Republic Bank Securities, thanks so much for your time. Hope to speak with you another time on the marketplace. And so that's it. Uh, government securing uh, close to 2 billion CDs from the domestic market in a seven year bond sale. Uh, we are turning attention now to the story I hinted you about the president appointing Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid as chief executive of the National Petroleum Authority, as indicated, is ending months of speculations linking him to one of the uh, most prestigious state-owned enterprises in Ghana. Uh, his appointment takes effect from the 1st of July and uh, we've got a letter uh, dated 17th of June from the president which uh, charges him to champion the vision and mission of the MPA which is to regulate, oversee and monitor the petroleum downstream industry in Ghana for efficiency, growth and stakeholder satisfaction. Uh, we want to speak right now to uh, Fitz Moses, who is a researcher with the IES. Um, his reactions to uh, this news of uh, Mustafa Hamid taking over the position of MPA boss. Uh, if you can hear me, Fitz, um, how's this news coming to you at the IES? Um, Laura, thank you for having me. Uh, we think it's, a, it's a good news. I mean, we want to congratulate um, Dr. Amid for the appointment first. And uh, we think that um, his, uh, his coming on board would help um, the uh, state agency that has been without leadership for quite some time now. But then again, there are several issues that uh, coming to NPA would have to be addressed by Dr. Amid. Mm. Now, we know already the issues surrounding the cylinder recirculation model and how um, the LPG Marketers Association had come out earlier to um, view their opinions on how the whole uh, model was running and how the policy implementation has been. Again, also, there have been concerns raised by the LPG Marketers Association on the, um, the issuance of certificates and licenses for some or other operating or other LPG outlets to be operationalized in the country. We think that these are things that you have to reconsider or we will be forced to reconsider. Again, we've, we've spoken about the issue of taxes or levies that or margins that have been increased on petroleum prices. Now, usually the UPPF, which is um, largely handled by UMPA, is one of the things that um, Dr. Hamid will have to reconsider government's position on them. We, we saw an increment in about 3 percent on UPPF. I think these are things that um, he can also look at, just particularly in the time where international factors are causing prices on the local markets to continue to increase. Again, to look at the fact that um, we have seen a, a, a growing trend in forced smuggling in the country, mm. which, of course, is leading to a loss of revenue to Ghanaians. Okay. Uh, it looks like we may have lost uh, face there for a moment. Uh, but there you see in your shots the man who is going to be taking over the National Petroleum Authority in the person of uh, Mustafa Hamid. He served as spokesperson to... Uh, then the candidate Ecofado from 2008 until 2017 when he became the information minister and presidential spokesperson. Prior to that, he served as the executive director of the Dankwa Institute and a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. And, and so we'll be looking forward to uh, what he's going to be doing at the MPA when he assumes office on the 1st of July, taking over from Hassan Tampoli. Mm -hmm.